Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're going to be building a conference table for a tree service company and we actually had to break the slab in order to do it. So to begin this build, we start with our slab breakdown process. So this is essentially cutting the slab into pieces, uh, smaller pieces that is, so that we can lay them out in the mold and get the size and layout that we want. Another thing that you might notice on this slab, I don't know if you can tell from this shot, but it is very, very warped. So much so that if we completely flatten it, we'll probably be left with less than two inches thick. So we actually had to break this slab in order to get it flat enough and basically take out those warped sections. Now, normally we would film something as cool as that because we literally took our forklift and snapped the slab with our forklift but we didn't need another visit from Occupational Health and Safety for the last time we climbed on top of our forklift. So we didn't film it, but maybe next time. We'll see. If you guys want it bad enough, maybe next time we will take the risk. Oh, I have no grip. Sorry. You good? It was sad. Uh, that goes. Something that's become quite popular on a lot of our builds in the recent months is a base layer. So what that is, is we pour about a half inch thick opaque layer. Typically it's black, but like for the table for Joe Manganiello, we did a metallic blue base layer. And what this does is it prevents you from seeing the leg plates that are used to mount the legs onto the table, but it still allows the majority of the pour to be clear, which lets you see those beautiful live edges of the piece of wood. Once the base layer is cured, we go ahead and give it about 180 grit sanding, and then it's time to top it off with the final layer of clear resin. There's kind of two ways you can go about the base layer. We're doing the first way here, which is letting it cure and then sanding it. Uh, but the second way is letting it only partially cure so it's still soft and then pouring your second layer over top. They're already off. Right? No, it's just yep. easier to play. It was popped all the way. This is a new sheet, so it should. Soon. There we go. Very nice. That was super easy. This is so easy. It's so now we are using our Festool track saw to actually trim this piece to size. So Festool makes a very nice saw. Uh, this track saw, you know, it's quite precise. There's a lot of fine adjustment features, but the only, I guess, downside to this saw is it does kind of lack in power. Uh, not that you can't work around it, it's just in order to make a cut like this, you're gonna have to go in multiple passes. Now we're 
adding the recesses that are actually going to house the leg pocket. So this is just a small little detail that we've been doing on our tables for years. But the, the top plate for our legs are six millimeters thick and we're just putting in a six millimeter thick recess. This way when you look underneath the table you don't actually see those mounting plates from the bottom side and it just kind of looks like the legs go into the table itself. So small detail but something we always like to do. So we sand our tables to 320 grit and then once they're done, if the client has requested a urethane finish, we take them over to Jekko. So what you're seeing Ian do here right now is he's sanding with 400 grit and that's because he's actually already applied the sealer coats to this piece. So after he applies his sealer over our 320 grit sanding, he does a 400 grit sanding, then removes the dust and then finally he can go ahead with the final top coat. So this is a sprayed acrylic urethane that Jekko's using. Uh, it is catalyzed as well, so this is a two component product, meaning that there's a hardener in there just to give more durability. And this is the most durable finish that we have to offer for our clients. Uh, it's resistant, I think, all the way up against sulfuric acid in terms of liquids. It's highly abrasion resistant uh, as well. The only downside to this finish is there's really nothing that you can do yourself to fix it or repair it. So if you want something that you can maintain and keep looking beautiful, maybe you want to go with an oil finish. But if you know you're someone who's really careful and you're going to protect your table and you don't need to maintain it, then you're probably going to want to go with the polyurethane finish. Something else that we didn't end up getting filmed for this table but is a critical step to the finishing is our black forest ceramic coating. So after Ian has finished applying the polyurethane and it's fully cured, we go ahead and apply two coats of our base coat and uh, two coats of top coat, sometimes one, sometimes two, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, but that further increases the durability, it gives a hydrophobic effect and it also uh, it does allow you to do a little bit of maintenance on the polyurethane where you can't usually if you don't have the ceramic. Uh, by having that ceramic on top, you can touch up any small abrasions or scratches that do end up happening. Now we get the table hoisted up in the air so we can mark out where our threaded inserts are going to go and then we pilot hole them out and just get those threaded inserts put into the bottom of the table. Again, this is another nice small detail that we always like to do on our tables. Instead of just using your normal wood screws, threaded inserts will allow you to remove the legs and reattach them as many times as needed without actually stripping out the holes in the table. So some of you were slick last week. You noticed where we missed uh, some editing. <laughs> In, in the video. So this week we're hiding another little Easter egg. I just want you guys to start your comment with Charlie and we'll know that you watched at this point in the video and we'll be sure to respond to all of your comments specifically. Hands on. Yeah. Right. Okay, tell us when we're that close. Um, yeah. I still got two still. feet. Okay. We want to bring it down to the side. Yeah. All right, you got to clear yourself, Joey, so we can get in there. Oh, okay. Down on the cart, this edge. Stabilize the carts, brother. Okay. 
Now it's time to get the legs put on the table and actually get it flipped over in the space for our client. So all of the legs fit perfectly in the recesses. Uh, one thing I don't know if you can see, but we do have some clearance around the outside just so it can expand and contract a little bit. Then we gotta get the whole team on one side of this table to flip it over because this thing is an absolute beast. The legs are probably close to 200 pounds per leg and the top is probably somewhere close to 1,000 pounds. So not an easy lift by any means at all. And then once it's flipped over, the last step is just to clear all our garbage away, get the blankets put back in the truck, put the client's chairs back around the table, and of course, collect the check, and then we're out of here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing our process for that table build. Uh, one thing, I don't know if anyone noticed, but that slab actually came from the same exact tree as the table that we're building for Joe Manganiello. Um, so that's something kind of unique. And if you look to my left, we've actually got one left. That giant slab over there, literally the biggest one. It's the last one left from that tree and it's sold. We're gonna be making a desk from it, but that'll be for a future video. Uh, but let us know what you guys thought of this conference table build. Let us know if you like the space that it went into. And we'll see you next week.